up. So let, let's so, let's yeah. talk about that. What um you know, can you give kind of the um, state of the union for you know before uh, uh, I'm sorry before the pandemic and, and oh yeah and after I'll I'll flash it. Yeah. Again, this is a little reminder. I've like all the data. I like side you know i mean i guess we can talk about this too but i have like a job in data analytics you got uh, you got a, a a day job i yeah. have a day job uh which i like you know i mean thank you to my manager who lets me like you know do all this sort of stuff but uh yeah like i love data and i love figuring out um you know where we're at and, like what's the health of bike racing and like yeah 2015 was a peak it kind of teetered down after that um but like was like pretty strong we saw uh, obviously 2020 there was like almost zero events driveway started uh, we had a five lap race. I remember that I got second. Uh, and then after that it was over, like, mm -hmm. and then we started again in June, but nationally, like no one was racing and really didn't start racing until, um, June of 2021, mm -hmm. um, which was really tough. Uh, and I think there was still about 30% decline in like race registrations, uh, across the board. Um, it is coming back, but nowhere near. I think there's like a 3% growth in the like four or five like numbers. So, um, you know, it's, you know, we're at a prime point to get a lot of like new people in, but you know, we, there are a lot of people just moved on. Um, yeah. or like, you know, they don't road race anymore. They do gravel because that was one thing that, um, you know, throwing a gravel race is one of the easier types of events to promote. I'm not throwing shade well, at gravel yeah, promoters. We'll, we'll, I do we'll it all. We can talk about that. But, uh, yeah, later. get that a separate yeah. note. But, um, yeah, people like decided to do that instead. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, yo, road is sick. How do we bring this back? And right. I love a challenge. So yeah. here we are. Okay. Um, all right. So, so yeah, I guess what, um, what do you have planned for, well, what, why don't we take one step back? Yeah. Uh, you had a, you had a good, uh, sort of story about the the name driveway series can you oh yeah you, and this yeah. is like driveway lore yeah. uh i'd have to actually like call the owner and who, who, bill dalheit um to confirm but apparently it was very difficult to build a like professional racetrack um like you can't just like do it anywhere and uh so i think they're like instead of calling it like he's building a racetrack he built a driveway and right. which there was a house at driveway uh shop house loop uh, and so, you know, essentially like building a driveway to your house, uh, but it's also, you know, using uh, pavement we imported from South Dakota. Not we at the time, <laughs> obviously, this is like 20 something years ago. But uh, yeah, that's the legend of how driveway Shout became out to the, driveway. To the loophole. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Shout out to loopholes. You know, yeah. you got to exploit them when they're there, you know, especially go on, when go you want to set up a, a racetrack. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's the only way. I mean, and, you know, look what it brought us. It's so awesome. I, I've got a, a random personal question. Do, yeah. do cars still race on there no. or no? Okay. No, no cars. There's a, there was. And when a, did that stop? Like, that stopped in 20, I think, 2021. Okay. Um, yeah, that's when because the property changed that's what I, it hands. stopped recently. Yeah, yeah, in like 2022. Um, and yeah, so we used to only be able to be out there on like Thursdays, and like it was a lot tighter schedule. We kind of have a little more freedom now, um, which you can get into plans for that. But uh, yeah, it was like until 2022, and then the land was like driveways for a while was always like up in the air. I remember like when I was like not involved in any capacity, I would show up and race. It's like, oh, is it gonna be around next year? Because the land had been for sale for quite a while. Right. Uh, but driveway is also in a floodplain. Um, it's like, you know, the lower half of the track like will flood like on a, you know, right, not, I won't say regularly, but like it will flood. Right. Uh, the Colorado is like right over there. Then there's another creek that borders the um, northern side of it. So. Uh, then the access uh, road also floods. So it's like, <laughs> it's tough. Like, and it's also like riding a railroad track. So it's like, right. there's not a lot of other options for what driveway can be. Uh, but there was a guy crazy enough to build a racetrack out there. And, right. You know, it worked for a long time. So. Yeah. Uh, th thankfully, he, he did that. So yeah. um, let's, let's touch on how uh, the, the kind of organization and leadership of driveway transitioned in, into yeah. your hands what what's the story with that oh man i don't even know it happened until it did to be honest okay. I mean, it's just sort of like <laughs> one of those one things that, well yeah. i'm just like saying yes like okay. uh i'm just like okay i'll do it yeah I, I can make this happen uh and yeah it was like post it was 2022 um driveway had been sold to oracle um and it was part of like the whole prop b initiative and can you can you explain that in in you know a few sentences? I can, like it's I mean I would say read the document. I'm not right. the for, like foremost authority on this, but essentially Oracle, uh, you know, very big tech company uh, and that has a campus on Riverside, uh, and 
there's like a head, there's another piece of land that's adjacent that they want, I think, for like headquarters or building something, but it's owned by the city. They want it for development. Yeah, they want it for development. It's owned by the city, and there's like a city facility on there. It's like a pump station, something like that. Uh, And I think the way things work, and don't quote me on this, but it's like the city has to like do a proposition in order for like that sort of thing to change hands to like a private entity. To a private, yeah. Yeah, Uh, and so they're like, okay, we'll give you this chunk of land, which there's a very big master plan for like driveway and that whole area where there's like the right next to 183 uh like the bulm creek project uh and it's kind of was like the last piece so it's like okay it's like we'll swap you know this for this and people vote on it essentially and that's you know kind of how that like deal is being worked out so is is the idea basically that um oracle has purchased the land that driveway sits on Correct. on behalf of the city i or, think that's or, I, that is the my understanding of it okay and then it will be like swapped out for the that other piece of land and to my knowledge like everything's going very smoothly with that um i do have to thank oracle they've been like the greatest landlords by letting us it was like a very small clause in the deal between the original owner um who owned driveway and mm-hmm. oracle to like in their best effort let the races continue yeah uh and they have made like every concession to like you know help us with that that's awesome which is super cool outside of alcohol which i get they're not an event company uh they're not they're letting us do our bike races which like you know when you look at it from their perspective a multi-billion dollar fortune like five company or something like that is like letting us throw a bike race uh it's like that's you know i'm pretty happy with that yeah and and we're, we're talking about driveway because it's not only an important piece of, you know, a a cyclist sort Mm -hmm. of culture here. It's also a really important piece of, of Austin. Oh yeah. Like driveway as a, uh, a cultural, you know, weekly ongoing event. It's, it's unprecedented. It's not like anything else long long, in in the country. And, and, you know, maybe there are some rivals in Europe or whatever, but like, even it's really special. It's It's very unique. Uh, it's, I mean, just like data wise, you know, I pulled, I have like an API uh, for road results and just looking at like over the last number of years, actually I'll throw up a little uh, visualization here, yeah. but driveway in terms of like, it is an outlier in terms of like consistent registrations. I think we have like 44,000 over the last like uh, 10 years or something yeah. like that since 2012. 44,000 yeah. 10 and, years. W- and it's like far above everybody else. Yeah. Uh, so it's not only like consistently one of the longest running, but also like we have the third most unique participants out of any race in the entire country. Uh, number one is, I think, Tour of America's Dairylands, which mm-hmm. is like 11 or so days of racing, uh, which it, which draws national level right. people. Right. Uh, and then it's Tulsa and yeah. then us. So right. we're number three, which like in the nation, like for a weekly event that like people don't from everywhere travel to have the most unique people is like pretty sick. Awesome. Um, and, yeah. and, and hopefully Oracle understands how, how unique Oh, uh, how important yes. it is to they do continue traditions like this in Austin. It's what makes Austin Austin. Yeah, right? and ultimately, I mean that you know with uh, you know with the property like having like community events like this, and also we partnered with the Loop this year to do running events. Like it shows that they're like they've been doing like their part in sort of like keeping that alive, and like hopefully when it turns into a city park, like you know these things like have been going on they can continue and like austin doesn't lose something like that so they definitely understood like how important it is to the community here and like that's why we're able to you know still throw races out there yeah incredible and yeah and i think i think myself included when i saw the headlines over the last couple years Mm -hmm. of of this multifaceted real estate deal that Oracle was getting into with the city yeah you think oh shit you Mm -hmm. know is is uh, driveway gonna be a victim and um yeah i think this is very relevant to to your leadership coming in um carrying the torch uh so are you are you um an owner of driveway is driveway like a non-profit like how is it structured it's moving forward yeah so like moving i mean like right now it's it's like i work with holland racing which has done it for a while it's just um i'm essentially like race directing it. It. and like doing like sponsorship stuff like getting um like attracting sponsors and like you know basically like staffing the people and stuff yeah. but it's technically all run with holland racing which has been doing it for 10 years now okay and so 
Um, and can that, you tell the listeners about Holland Racing? What what exactly? Yeah, so Holland is? Racing is run. Actually, I learned this is a fun little bit. So Holland Racing, a lot of people don't know where that name comes from, but uh, Andrew Willis, who has been running the driveway, probably thrown more bike racing events than anybody else in the entire country. Um, and his wife started it, and it's Holly Andrew Holland. Boom, there you go, All right. Holland Racing. But yeah, okay. And then um, you and I talked a little bit about this um, before the interview, but um, is there? And, and we'll get into kind of a, a, a fundraising campaign that we're, that we're talking oh, yeah. about for, for next year. Um, what do you need from the community as far as support for driveway? What are the most important things? I mean, honestly, people show up, which is, you know, they've been doing, which is great. I'd love to see, like, people introduce, like, their friends, uh, like, yeah. get other people started into racing their bike. Uh, and that's like the biggest thing. And it's also like, you know, people can sponsor other racers. They can sponsor races. I mean, there's like an advertising component, uh, to driveway, which like when I was racing, didn't really understand, like just racing, didn't really understand it. But then I'm like, look, I'm like thinking of all the business I've given to people that have sponsored driveway about my house through a realtor there. I got right. LASIK from someone that sponsored the driveway, uh, I'm trying to think of everything else. Uh, I got a roof from CCR Roofing, uh, which sponsored the driveway. Yeah. It's like all of these companies that are like small businesses that are owned by bike racers, uh, like sponsor the driveway. And like, I'm going to go to somebody that not only supports like what I love doing, but also has helped out like my friends. Like, yeah. because it's like, oh yeah, it's like we use, you know, that, the, you know, this roof, like, et cetera. Like I bought a house and then I needed a new roof. I knew who to call. It yeah. was like easy rather than like sifting through yelp reviews i'm like i don't want to do this like i'd rather it's a community thing. yeah i trusted them to cut my eyes open with lasers <laughs> so it's like you know shout out to uh you know capital i right um yeah so it's like and you know it's there there's like that component to it so like there if you like have a business and want to sponsor a race like there's you know that element to it hit, as hit well. you on yeah on Instagram bang my line yeah. uh yeah i mean it's you know and driveway has like a good social media presence uh there's obviously a lot of people that like attend and like go to the you know results page and stuff like that. So it's just like and it's like not expensive to like you know uh, market at the driveway, but mm -hmm. uh, can be pretty uh, you know. All right, so so tell your friends, bring your friends, bring your friends, teach them bike racing, S sponsor, sponsor, um, and then I mean, we could get into the other fundraising stuff. Let's do, you do, it. do that? Yeah, Absolutely. so we are doing my. Uh, I mean, I like lean on my friends so hard. Uh, like my friend Eric Bones. Uh, or Eric Thompson designed a kit, um, and there's like a supporter jersey. Uh, Castelli uh, produces them. They've been a, like the longest running sponsor too for driveway. Um, so we'll have a kit uh, that people can order. Um, season passes too. That's like stable race registration is the biggest thing uh, that keeps an event like driveway going. So it's like, oh, I can like register for all of them at once. And it's like discounted, but it also like the startup costs of like a race, especially in the beginning of the year. I mean, I'm paying like, thousands and thousands of dollars in like permits and equipment and stuff like that. Um, so that helps. And then also we're doing a t-shirt. I partnered with a BMXer who it, like, I love BMXers, especially when I can use them. Uh, and like my BMXer friends screen printing them. So we're going to have those t-shirts, which I think are going to be sick. So awesome. Yes. Yeah, so there's like multiple like levels. Like even if you don't live here, like you can support the driveway if you like love bike racing and you get like a kid. So yeah. And, and I think, I think for the sake of being abundantly clear, you and I met before we did this taping, True. and you told me that you have um, expenses in the tens of thousands. Hundreds of, <laughs> hundreds of thousands. People don't realize, like, driveway, like, is, like, over 100 grand easy a year okay. to run. And it's also variable. Um, so so you're saying that's that's a nut you need to cover. Yeah, and, and, totally. And we're talking about, you know, this really important Austin tradition and, mm -hmm. and keeping it going. So uh, Tali's setting up a drive for for this coming year yeah there's gonna be sick merch there's gonna be ways if you're a racer you can merch subscribe drop. for for the whole season yes. and and I just want to um, again be, be abundantly clear uh, money coming in is really important um, yeah. for the driveway and it's it's obviously not something that is making cash uh, hand over fist oh, every no. year I have like, a normal job yeah you know uh, yeah. yeah and it's also I mean like this is my first year like really um, I mean, like, it is, like, a business. Like, it has, like, I pay employees. Like, there's there's a lot to it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, there's a, yeah, a lot to cover. Um, so I, th I think in the community here, folks have some expendable income. When we, you know, promote the campaign, 
Yeah. Buy buy the t-shirt, donate the extra. Yeah. T-shirt's you know, sick how much, too. How much, yeah. I mean, I'm like, I'm also like OCD about like design and stuff like that. And I'm like, I'm gonna print these on like vintage blanks and like stuff like that. So it's like, you know, they'll be tight. Uh, they're, they're, yeah, the merch, yeah. The merch is gonna be good. It's, oh yeah, love love a good. And it like looks like the aesthetic is. Uh, I don't know. I think everyone will like really like it. It's fun. <laughs> I like love like you know it's like fun branding all this stuff because that's the whole other component is like. Uh, I mean, this is like a, a side tangent, but like bike racing is so cool. Like when I take my like friends that like don't like race, they'll like watch a crit. Like yeah. they'll come to a lot, a lot of BMXers uh, live in Colorado. I'll go up there and race Littleton. Oh, cool. And like all of them come out and they're like, this is the craziest thing we've ever seen. You guys are like flying at 40 miles an hour around a corner and like you're angled to like just, you know, run into a tree. It's like, this is sick. And, uh, and yeah. you agree. And by, and by the it's, way, yeah. to, to, go, to go back a little bit, um, what we're talking about is is road racing. Yeah. about promoting road racing. Yes. How do you feel about the state of it and and where it's going? Yes. Uh, I mean, I think it is on the up, and I'm trying to help it as I'm much to as be I optimistic, can. Right? I can't, you know, I, it's a it's a torch that a lot of people have to carry. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like you know, I have like some weird Instagram following that like I don't know how it like came about, but like I try and use that for like pushing like local bike races like mm -hmm. partnering with pace ben like we rebranded uh or like we did the posters and stuff for him last year and like just made it like look better because like when i see like road racing that's like being promoted on like a 8 by 11 piece of paper and it just like doesn't look cool i'm like no it's like there's not that much effort that takes to like brand something that looks cool and like hype it up like there's that component that i think has been missing for road racing which uh, I mean, like, people that I look up to, like, there's David Trimble, who used to run Red Hook, did a great job of hyping Red Hook. Like, yeah. he just, like, you have to build this, like, hype around your event. Otherwise, it's just, like, it goes nowhere. Well, well the elephant in the room here is you got to make it look cool or yeah. else you're going to be racing with a bunch of... Dennis. And yeah, we love, we love exactly. Dennis. Love yeah, Dennis. I mean, <laughs> hey, I mean, like, I got my teeth cleaned by yeah. Dennis that sponsors driveway. <laughs> Shout out to Dr. Greg. Uh, you know, he is awesome. Uh, but yeah, it's like you want to attract. Like it, it's got to it's got to be relevant. Yeah, yeah, you want. I mean, like anything you do, you want yeah. to look cool. Like yeah. it's just like at the end of the day, it's like if you're doing something. Like I would road race regardless if something looked cool or not, because I love it. It's like fun. I don't know how. Like I've got this addicted to it. But like, I think like branding stuff accordingly is something that like gravel racing and whatnot has done a better job of because yeah. it is a newer. So it's a younger promoter. A lot of these promoters, like, they are retiring. There are, like, older. I'm not saying old people don't. I'm not, like, ageist by any means. But, like, they could do a better job at attracting, like, well, what's I, the new I think the PC people. word is, is relevance. Yeah. I mean, know? yeah, relevant. I'm the most, I mean, I'm not the best PC no, person. I, I'm but. A, I wasn't <laughs> saying you weren't. I'm, but, my, yeah. my point is that um, being relevant is, is the, it's the most important yeah. thing. And, and maybe what maybe what we're talking about is hopefully there will, there will be a new wave, a new generation yeah. of road race promoters. Because totally. There I don't, is. I don't know. Well, I was going to say, yeah. I, I don't know that many. There's, I mean, James Grady is like a close friend. He mm -hmm. throws Mission Crit and also is helping out with like San Rafael and like will partner with other events like uh, Giro, San, Giro San Francisco um, to like, you know, push that. Like, you know, they'll attract a, a sponsor too. Like they'll pitch like, cause if you make something look cool, sponsors want to come in right. and that just grows the event. Yeah. There's no bad, like there's nothing bad that comes from like making it look cooler. All you're doing is attracting like more people to participate. Road racing is way more fun when there's way more people. Totally. It's just like across the board, like yeah. I don't want to race against 10 people. Like I don't want to travel to an event that didn't do a good job promoting. I'm racing against 10 guys. Yeah. That sucks. Like yeah. I've been there. It's not fun. Uh, but if I can race like against a hundred people and like the energy feels like Tulsa, yes, give it to me. Like yeah. it's tight. And yeah, there's like a lot of value in like, you know, building something that looks cool and then attracting brands that like, oh, hey, like we have a lot more prize money now. Like it's just, it's what happens. And uh, yeah, you just like, you know, put a little more effort in. It's yeah. All you gotta I, do. I, I love, hard. I love the optimism and, and um, Austin, Austin's a great place to be for it. And I, I yes. just... I just hope some of the other areas of the country can also oh yeah also do it and, and keep up totally um, and and what I'm referring to specifically is uh, and and I I've experienced it personally but the whole uh, notion that that road racing is ebbing you know obviously there's more interest yeah. in in uh, in gravel yeah and that and yeah. and it's not um, also if you're a, a race organizer or promoter 
like you said, gravel is just easier. Yeah. So to, so to get the city permits, to get the insurance, that oh, is, yeah. that's got to be a nightmare. Oh, it's insane. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, because as someone who is like, I will be like throwing a gravel race next year, like, I won't say the date or a lot of details because I'm still waiting on like, I will do things properly, like in terms of like insurance and stuff like that. But you, a lot of times, don't need that. There are a lot of gravel races that are big that like don't have that. They don't have the same like level of expense all the time. Um, like it's you just know, hard, it's just hard to throw a road yeah, race. Well, yeah, it's like well, you need like a caravan and like medics and stuff like that. And like a gravel race, like it is a little bit easier to promote just from like the, an outside perspective. There's not like a governing body like USAC with like officials that you also have to like put up in a hotel if they have to travel. Like there's not multiple waves of people. It's like you can just go start a hundred people on a yeah. race and like you have a couple sag cars and a lead car and then like your result is like you know you use a simple timing system and yeah. it's like yeah and, and you have some like bare minimum insurance like if that. Um, and the other thing too is like you row racing like is a, is just smaller like competition sports is like I mean I'm not saying gravel isn't competitive but you can get a broader base of people that are just like there to like finish like which is awesome like you know whether you're there to race like and try and win and get on right. the podium or if you're there because this is like motivating there's you more to, of a fondo culture yeah more of a fondo yeah. culture and it's yeah. like more of a like oh I always want to complete 100 miles which I'm like that's awesome but like Doing it in the road race, it's like, it's not as fun. Like doing a hundred mile road race and you got like dropped and you're riding by yourself <laughs> on like a road, on like a, you know, farm to market road. Like it's not as fun. Is yeah. it like you're in like a beautiful, like scenic area and you're like weaving through trails and stuff like that, like which gravel can give you. Yeah. Um, and so, but you know, so they can attract 5,000 people to do a race. You're not getting, you're getting a thousand at Tulsa across like the entire weekend. So right. it's like 400 people like a night like a night and so there's like the you have to rely more on like sponsor money and stuff like yeah. that to make it happen and your expenses are higher it's just like tough yeah um so yeah it's just like it's harder but they you know they do a good job at like promoting like yeah they make it like look cool and i'm like well road racing's cool it's like uh, road racing's so hard too um with gravel getting like super competitive though now it's like and like world tour riders are coming into it and like have been for a while and they're just like wrecking shop like i'm wondering if like that it will switch, like people will want to like, you know, road race again. We'll, well see. Or, or, or maybe the um, interest in gravel feeds back into to road. Totally, like, yeah, I mean, it's know, like- People onboard it into gravel and, and come back to road Yeah, race. they go back and forth. I yeah. mean, like, you know, roadies will go race gravel. I mean, like uh, Chris Lamparity was like, uh, who is a crit national championship, like champion three times over, went and raced like gravel worlds mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that. So like, there is a back and forth. Um, and you know it's the same you know at the end of the day you're doing 100 miles like really hard in a road race or you're doing 130 in like a gravel right. race like it's a little bit different with the team aspect but uh you know with like road racing there's obviously more of that component but yeah. it's coming to gravel i see it um you know i don't do a shitload of gravel racing but i don't have to cuss can i do that absolutely oh sick absolutely. yeah i'm like a sailor um <laughs> but yeah um where were we driveway I, bike yeah racing. i, I think just, um I think we can we can start talking about um, your new project and, and so to to tally up the projects we got the day job got day job we got driveway series BMX um, we got B BMX and and the other thing is you're you know you're really active on social which I think helps you promote and engage audiences yeah. around, around all these all these projects get people hyped yeah, yeah that's what I use it for I mean it's like I hate the internet like. <laughs> I hate, like, I mean, like, brand identities and all this stuff. Like, I will frequently, like, a lot of what I do on the internet's a bit. Like, it's just, like, yeah. I can't, like, really be serious, like, about. But, you know, so. So where so where does the uh, the online personality come from? Oh, dude, I think it's making what, fun what? of influencers. <laughs> okay. Like, I think it's, like, when I saw it, I was just like, God, this feels, like, unnatural. Like, I can't be that way. Like, yeah. and it's like, I deactivate my Instagram for months at a time. And, like, brands that, like, support me, they're like, hey, where'd you go? And I'm like, yo, I'm on a mountain. Like, I can't be talked to right now. But. Yeah, it's like inter the internet's a bit, but it is like a you know it sucks you in. I hate it. It's a yeah. double a double edged sword. That explore page, man, it will keep me up in there. But uh, <laughs> down the rabbit hole. Yeah, it's just it's going down. But like I do use it for like you know a beneficial reason. At the end of the day, it's like yeah, like support like brands that sponsor the driveway that also sponsor me. Like I'm putting that out there. Yeah. And like hyping up races and like making funny videos to like get people's like you know attention on stuff. So, yeah. So yeah. it's it's a uh, it's ironic just the the your online kind of social media personality <laughs> has to be the love hate relationship with social media. Yeah. And then you, you really 
kind of need it to do the, the promoting that you want to do. Oh, yeah. So it, it's, a, it's, it's a vicious cycle, It is right? a vicious cycle. Yeah. I use it. I'm trying to be better about it. It's like definitely like a struggle. I'm like, I don't want to look at my phone right now. Um, and like be more connected in the real world, but uh, you know I do use it for that like sort of stuff. Um, but yeah. Uh, so so next project. Yes. Matadors. Matador. Yes. Um, so that's like, you know, we have like great group rides and stuff like that in Austin. Um, and I'm like always been one that like doesn't do a lot of group riding, um, but there's like Breakfast Club, which is like you know huge. Um, and they have like, you know, some pretty fast paced rides, but like for me, it's, I am interested in developing like bike racers, um, and, or people that like want to like, what's harder, like what's after doing 40 miles, like, you know, but it's like with a big group and like people like, you know, they'll like go hard up a couple hills and stuff like that. But like, what's hard all the time? Like what, what's ba basically next? a drop, a drop, ride. drop, ride yeah. yeah. And like, I can use like, you know my sort of like internet uh persona <laughs> internet to like skills. rile people up and like when you get like our team has like is like pretty stacked it's like you know michael sheehan used to race like you know conti uh for jelly belly uh eli um houston um you know it's like hammers like he raced for elevate and then there's evan who raced like ncl like there's like we, you know we're like the fast people and so we're like okay let's like let's create a ride and like a team um, and it's kind of like driveway supported, like, you know, I attract like sponsors that, you know, to the driveway that also sponsor the team. So yeah. it's like progress coffee is like our like title sponsor. And um, is prog progress off 35? Is that So it's actually, this is a little drop. Uh, yeah. they'll be opening, I think when this podcast is, comes out in about a, less than a month, but they're opening a new location right by holiday on seventh. Okay. Um, so right when you get off the bike path like on Shady Lane from the driveway, which nice. will now be the new driveway after party spot. Oh, um, hell yeah. Yeah, and we're like partnering with like Fat Tire to do like free beer and stuff like that. And they'll have like food trucks, and it's like before you get to anything. Um, so, because, you know, we still can't have alcohol out of the driveway, um, which like in the past was like a huge part of like fostering community. Right. It's like, oh yeah, you race really hard, like you have a beer, like you go ride home, you go great, grab food or something like that. And so since I, it's, that was like a huge struggle last year. It's like, I couldn't create that and I like beat myself up over it. Yeah. Um, Cause like, you know, as you know, especially dealing with the hottest summer in the history of Texas, <laughs> it's like, and I'm like, oh man, why won't people like hang out or like, you know, stick it's just like, yo, it's 106 degrees. I can't drink like beer. Like I just want to get out of this heat. Yeah. Um, and so I'm like, okay, how do we fix that? I'm like, oh, well let me partner with somebody that can like is close to the driveway. Um, that like people can like go and hang out at. They're gonna show bike racing, yeah. um, which is awesome. Um, yeah, so that, that'll be like super fun. And Perfect. try and like, yeah, try and like, you know, use that as like the hub for racing. And like, we're also gonna host our like drop ride out of it as well. Um, sort of like move from the 35 location down there. So that'll come in February. Awesome. Um, which will be super cool. Um, yeah, we also like a capital Chevy back. I've been like confirming sponsors, Trek, huge supporter of like the team. Yeah. Um, are all going to be like rocking Sigma Dones. Uh, but they're also like supporting driveway. They're, uh, you know, the announcer actually works for Trek and they're doing like mechanical support and stuff like that. And like prizes, like that's the other thing. They helped me out so much last year. I was like, yes, I want you guys back. Driveway gave out over as, uh, 1057 prizes, like, all right. which it's gift cards. It's like nutrition. It's whatever. But like the scale of driveway, I don't think people understand. It's not like, Oh, it's like a one-time thing. Like, let's get some prizes. It's yeah. like week after week after week, you need you to do this. Yeah. yeah. And I can't like, I could not do it, but like, I can't, I can't like, it's just not in me to not give it like everything I can. So, um, yeah, like I try like, you know, in every way possible to like do something for the community. It's like give back through premiums because not everyone's winning, but like yeah. you can go race for a premium and like, you know, get a, you know. Uh, win your entry back. Yeah. Win your entry back. Like there's Tolly Bucks too. It's like you need a free entry. Um, also like supported my friend's coffee company, Roly Poly, last year. And like I would buy coffee from him and then like do coffee premiums. And so it's like, you know, it was, it was super fun. Awesome. Yeah. So, that's um, Matador. Ma yeah, Matador and uh, are, are you guys, do you have a, a race schedule lined up or like what? Ooh, it's tough because like not everything. It's, it's sort of in informal it's, right it's now. It's informal. Or? We'll do all the Texas classics, yeah. which like I've been doing like some work with that. There was like a uh, Lago Vista classic uh, road race in Austin area. We got that to be a junior selection event, okay. which means like if you're, you do well at this event, like you can go to Europe. So we expect like a huge Damn. junior population. Yeah, it's like two days. I'm doing a prologue for juniors only out at the driveway. 
but Matador will be racing that. Um, there's Ra random questions. So yes. How, how do you um, how do you link up with with juniors racing? Like, is there a, they approach, a local? Okay. They approached me. Yeah. Okay. So we actually hosted a USAC event at the Meteor. Um, so it's like the director of like road with Tanner Putt, who used to race for like UHC. And then there's like so many hitters here. Hugo Scala, who races like for their like pretty much like national team mm -hmm. team in Project Echelon. Um, he was there. There's like a bunch of um, like, you know, like pretty established athletes that came into town. And then I like just dropped like I was like, yo, we got like sick road races here. Like I would love like for them to get more national hype. Like and so putting on that like national calendar, like that goes out to all the juniors and like. For instance, that like, strikes me as a coup. That's that's a huge step. Yeah, it's a huge step. Yeah, and like I don't really like, I don't like. I'm not the race director for Lago. I just like want to see the scene. Like yeah. get like that get that race the shine it deserves. Um, and you know, there's gonna be a new promoter for it, um, Violet Crown. So it's like you know, it, it should be sick. But um, yeah, like having 120 juniors come and compete, and then there's Pace Bend the following weekend, which I'm doing a crit for to make it part of the Masters Cup. Which draws like you know two hundred something or like not two I don't want to say two hundred because our field cap is one hundred and twenty uh, like one hundred and twenty something masters racers mm -hmm. and so it up levels the competition like here which is something I was always searching for like when I like was starting out like I would win but like I wanted like harder races I always wanted more and I'm like if I can bring that to the people here and like you have like an epic road race that's like hard and it's not like the same people winning or yeah. like one team dominating. There's like this, it's hype. Like there's like, oh shit, like this team's coming to town. Like yeah. this is gonna be brutal. Like, you know, Legion's coming or they, you know, it they yeah. like aviators. Le levels are here. Up. Yeah, it levels up everybody. Yeah. It's like what is it? Rising rising tide lifts all ships, yeah. sort of thing. So it's like trying to do that. Um, so that's gonna be part of our race schedule. Uh, and then there'll be, I think there's like Cedar Hill, like a lot of like Texas racing. I'm a, we're gonna do nationals or some of us are which is in a new location. It's in, um, like, West Virginia, which is, like, close to Ohio, which is, you know, it could be easy. Yeah. Bop down there. Uh, and then, obviously, like, Tulsa. I want to do uh, Tour of Dairylands. I've never got to do it because it always conflicted with nationals or I, like, got blown out. Um, and then I think I'm going to do a fixie crit over in Europe, Zurich crit, uh, which is produced by Dave Trimble, who did Red Hook. Okay. Um, and I'm going to go try and, like, uh, see the Olympics, uh, which will be fun. Sweet. Not race. I wish yeah. I can't qualify for that. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so, like, that's our, like, you know, it was just kind of doing fast group rides and stuff like that. And, like, you know, we're filling a void, too. Elbows Racing uh, is no longer in existence, which mm -hmm. was, like, a hammer team that I used to have to go up against and then eventually became, like, a part of. Uh, and so, yeah, it's like someone's got to carry the torch. Like, All right. You know, just, like, do something. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, and and uh, the races. Uh, I'm sorry, the group rides are every other week. Is that? It's every week right every now. Week? Yeah, okay. yeah. Our schedule is like we have a Strava club and stuff like that, uh, and Instagram and whatnot. Strava clubs have been like pretty great for like, oh, here's a ride, and like you know we'll get like sixty something people, um, something like that. But yeah, so that's like that project. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. And then um, we've got. Red Rocks Roubaix coming up. Red Rock Roubaix. I mean, as I was saying, doing too many things at once, I was on the phone with the, I think, uh, it'll know tomorrow, uh, but when this podcast comes out, it'll be uh, signed and done. But okay. uh, we're going to do, it'll be 101 miles is the, the route that I have. Which and is a little shorter. A little shorter, yeah. but like more gravel. So there's like, um, which like was hard and I was trying to figure out, okay, how do I get people to like, cause all of the gravel stuff has been getting paved south of right. Austin, um, week after week is like, oh, there's a new you know, like section that got paved and there's this beautiful road, old Sayers, which I don't think is going to get paved anytime soon. Um, and so I'll actually go out that and there's this, it's, it gets really difficult after Bastrop mm -hmm. to do a loop because there's a huge national guard, like. Uh, what do you call it, like camp, that you can't ride through. Mm -hmm. And so it's like on the other board, it's like there's nothing. But there's a lake, um, Lake Bastrop, there's like a trail that runs through it. There's this beautiful road that dead ends into this lake. And then there's a gravel trail that goes through it. And like it's sick riding. It's like turny. There's like a low water crossing. Like it sort of adds like a, a narrow, it'll be super narrow too, which will be super fun. Um, and you pop out on the other side of the lake which then you can go through Camp Zwift and then pop back on Old Sayers uh, and sort of like double back. So it should be uh, like a super fun day. Trek's going to do like neutral support. Great. Um, I, th I mean, yeah, I, well, I'm going to try and make it free if I can get the sponsor. Hopefully it will be because like I got paid for everyone's. 
entry into like it's a state or it's not a state uh, park, but like I got a basically I'm working at a deal where I can just like pay for everybody to not have to stop. They can right. just go race through the right. race through the park and then not have to stop and pay and stuff like that. Because I just like you know I just want to. Do fun stuff. That that sounds awesome. Yeah, I, I did it last year and I had a total blast. Super it was, fun. It was a, a big day. Yeah, uh, this day it sounds like will be a little shorter. Yeah, but more climby. So okay, be, yeah, it'll right. be hard. Yeah, you you get the difficulty in. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and how many how many people showed up last year? Well over a hundred something. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was like, like pretty big. And then I mean like you know by the time it's done like people are like oh I just want to ride home. Yeah. Um and like I, <laughs> it's like I get it. Um but uh, yeah like who finishes? But I should have some like prizes and stuff like that um, from like you know my sponsors. I'm always trying to use like you know I don't care about like getting stuff from sponsors. Like I was like how can you guys support the community that I have here? Yeah. Uh, and like Map last year did like 500 bucks for like men women like. To like 500, 200, 100, which was like tight. And I'm like, yeah, yeah let's, let's do that again. Um, so, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, we talked about all these projects. Yes. Where, where do you find the, uh, the, time. the inspro, the, t- the time? Oh, man. I, just, I don't know where it comes from. I've always been like, I don't want to say ADHD, but like, I mean, definitely. You've always had a lot of plate spinning? Yeah. I've always just like been going and like, I just say, yeah, I have a lot of energy and like, I feel like I can always do more. Like I always want to do more. I always like want to see like, how far can I take this? Um, and just like, you know, kind of see what happens. And I was like driveway. I mean, it started out of like me throwing fake races, like down South, like coning off like a flooded neighborhood. And then like, you know, people like showing up and say, Oh, this is kind of fun. And then it's just like, yeah, gotta keep going. But I can't like lose. And, and you and you took on responsibility with driveway after that. Oh or, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like that's essentially like how all that Got happened. It. Yeah. So like I approached him because I was working really hard to bring driveway back simultaneously. I was like, how do we do this? And we ended up bringing it back for like nine weeks at the end of the season in 2022. Um, because I approached, I was just like, how do we do this? Like right. I'm gonna do it. Like right. and we figured it out. We yeah. got it done. We got like we got it back and. Like, without, like, me probably doing that fake race down there, like, every every Wednesday. Yeah. I, uh, I don't think it would have come back. Because yeah. um, I would have not been exposed to, like, throwing events or, like, races. I think I only threw, like, Red Rock Roubaix, you know, during the pandemic. Or it was, like, 2021. I was like, we're doing this. Uh, yeah. And people weren't too happy about that. But, hey, <laughs> you know, it happened. So, uh, so uh, last year was the second year of Red Rock Roubaix? Re- uh, la- Red, well, Red it's been Rock. going on. BTC Cycling um, used to do it. Okay. And then they, like, weren't going to do it in 2021. And so I just did it. Kind of stepped on some toes. But, like, I was like, ah, oh, this is fun. And, yeah. like, you know, I know there's a group of people that want to do it. Um, and then, yeah, so I kind of, like. Got it. Like strong armed it. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize that the fake race was your entree into kind of taking on responsibility. Yeah, yeah. It was was kind of like a strange little like little situation. But yeah, I mean, like I'm always like, you know, wanting to do more. I've like raced for so long too. It's like, it's like, what's the trajectory? Is it like, do I keep doing this and like be a really strong masters racer, or can I like also keep doing this and then also throw bike races <laughs> and then also still ride BMX and throw BMX events and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, it's just like, yeah, it's just, you know, got to do it. Every so, so what are you, what are your um, aspirations, hopes for driveway in moving into the future? Oh, you yeah. know, the, the legacy, what, what do you, what do you, and, and we talked a little bit about this before the, yeah. the taping, the community, like, yeah, that, well, that's one of the main reasons you're doing all this. That's, right? I think, the reason yeah. I'm doing it. Um, like, it's, I just see, it's weird, but, like, I know, like, the city is going to turn it into a park, and, like, they want the races to continue from every, all the communication I've heard. I just want to make sure, like, I want that to be, like, the craziest bike place you've ever been to. Like, I also, like... The one thing I want, like, directly for myself is a skate park named after me. It's, like, call it Tollywood, and, like, I want a skate park at driveway. Like, I just, I need it to happen. I'll pay for it. I don't and, care. And a skate park that, that allows a BMX. Right? That allows BMX. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, No, I mean, we have to have that. Like, it's it's a BMX city. Um, but, like, there's, it's 40 acres out there. There's, like, it butts up to the Colorado River. Like, you can go jump off, like, you can swing off of a tree into the Colorado if you want to swim in it. Like, it's right there. You could do, I want to do a mountain bike track around it. Uh and it's like, you know, 1.6 mile like loop essentially yeah. uh, around the perimeter. And there's like elevation changes. There's like mud sections, beautiful cottonwood trees and stuff like that back there. Um, so it would make for like a perfect hub for that. Cyclocross, I want to do um, like 
I'd pass this on to somebody who like races more cyclocross, but I'd help with the promotion aspect of it. But like a weekly cyclocross event, like they do in San Antonio, like Friday afternoons or like something duh. like that. Like yeah, duh. it's like duh. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's like a tunnel that goes under speed loop that no, like not a lot of people. It's scary. Yeah. But, like go through, but you could send a cyclocross race up through that and then like onto the top of speed loop and then down through those woods like. It would be so cool. Yeah. And it's like getting locations to do stuff like that is hard. And so if I can have any sort of like influence into what this becomes, whether it's like from a fundraising perspective of like raising money to build this, because that's what you got to do. Like if you go to the city with a plan and money, it's like, hey, like, you know, hopefully this happens. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like I would love for a set of like trails to be out there, like, you know, that are like, there forever like there's no threat of them like yeah. being demolished which like you know happens um because you look at places that do stuff like this really well which like uh colorado like the most skate parks per capita they have this incredible bike park called valmont which um is like the bmxers maintain it that are like paid to um which is like a great model and then we have a guy in austin that does that will blunt uh he like builds some of the best trails in the entire country and I'm like, yo, he's like, you could do that out here and do mountain bike tracks. Like, it would just like, I don't want to see it be turned into something that like, isn't a hundred percent bike focused. Yeah. Like, if I can have the ability, I would love to see a velodrome out there. Yeah. Brad Houston, that's his like lifelong goals of velodrome. Okay, like, I did in, not know that. Oh yeah, and like, I mean, he couldn't do it. Like, if he could, he would be the one to put a velodrome in Austin, um, which would make it like a say, like you know, like you could train for the Olympics here. Like, yeah. it'd be nuts. Yeah. Um, I just don't want to see it like a bunch of pickleball courts or something, yeah. you know, like, or like an ACL, like overflow venue. Like, I don't want to see, we do so much for like bringing people into the city, which is important. It's like, you know, bars and tourism and stuff like that. Yeah. But like, you need something for like the community of people that have like lived here. And like, to Austin has been a cycling hub for so long. Like, I mean, Hill Abel, who used to run, um, bicycle sports shop, like pretty much brought mountain biking to central Texas. And like, there's tons of that here. Obviously, you got the Lance Armstrong effect, like stuff like that. There's, you know, there's so much bike related here. Yeah. But with all the construction, these new developments, like our spaces are being taken away. Like I was just like riding in Creedmoor. It's like development after development. The roads are falling apart. You know, there's like not a lot of like bike focused stuff getting built. And there's only like Austin's huge and we have like three skate parks. Like we need more. Like there's more bikes because it's like been so good for like my entire life. Yeah. It's like a lifelong thing, whether you're racing, riding BMX, like you could do it forever. And like, it, it's just like, there's no downside. Like yeah. it keeps you healthy. It's like fun. It's like, especially like for kids. Like, I mean, like the amount of times I had to like get up and try again, like a trick after like over and over, all I did was just told me to keep trying. Yeah. I spent four hours trying to trick <laughs> when I'm like 15. And it's just like, you know, you, it builds like character to a degree. Yeah. So it's like, It'd be cool to have like a space that's just like totally dedicated to that. Yeah. So that's what I want. Whether it happens like at the driveway or at Bulm Park, which is like adjacent to it, be happy. But if I can have any sort of like influence for that, it's like you know. That's I think what that, I, do. I think that's a great answer. Yeah. So you're you're in it for the uh, for the long haul. For the long haul and a skate park with my name on it. That's Tolly- all Tollywood. I want. Tollywood. <laughs> I'd be so hyped. I'll pay a million dollars for that. <laughs> that is my legacy. This is a skate park. Uh, you know, for the for the OG BMXer crew. So I guess um, in the show, I like to try to draw some parallels between bike riding and and usually business. But for yes. for you, we can you know extrapolate that into into life and your Perfect. efforts promoting you know bike racing um, in the city. Do do you have anything that comes to mind as far as the the parallels between bike racing and some of the the difficulty, the, the struggles you come up against in, uh, you know, in, in your exploits here, trying to, trying to promote bike racing? Yes. I mean, it is honestly like bike racing has taught me like a lot about like just, well, it's like discipline and like determination. I mean, the number of times I've like failed at like a race or something like that, or like didn't plan like yeah, I mean, honestly, like just didn't, like, didn't come correct. Didn't do the, didn't, yeah, didn't come correct. Yeah. Like didn't like like nutrition properly, like whatever it's at the end of the day, it's just like, was I like preparing myself like enough? Was I thinking about like every possible thing that could go wrong? Like, or was I just like sort of like capriciously like, like, well, yeah, winging it. Uh, and yeah, I mean like this year with like running driveway, like I made so many like mistakes 
But, like, I feel like if I didn't have, like, a road racing background and, like, determination, like, when things went wrong, like, I kept going. Like, I wanted to quit so many times. Mm-hmm. I don't think people know, like, how – I spent, like, I was trying to throw another race, wrong turn. Mm-hmm. Uh, I worked so hard for, like, months and, like, got to, like, the finish line. And then I show up and, like, the city of – or, like, a contractor that was repairing the, uh, the road, uh, like, didn't have a permit but, like, excavated a water main. And I had, like, worked so long, spent – you know, it was like four grand in the hole already on an event that like didn't happen. And I was That's just, brutal. It was brutal. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I like can't like what what am I gonna do? But I wanted to quit so bad. I wanted to like pass driveway off to somebody else and just like walk away and hide. Yeah. And then it's just like but I kept going. Yeah. And it's like so every time I like failed in road racing, got to the very end and like something messed up, like you know, I want, you want to quit and then you just kind of got to go that extra step. Yeah. And like, it was worth it. Cause like, yeah, it's like that race will come back next year. Wrong turn. But like, it's, you know, what am I trying to say here? I'm always just like losing track. No, I, I, um, think, I think that's a good thread. It's, and it, it that came up uh, recently with, with Doug Zell. Yeah. It's, it's the time in the race when you, you just feel like you can't push anymore and you, you got to find find a little inspiration to keep going oh yeah, yeah. i mean that's me and lago cramping i was just like just keep going and yeah. like it you feel like you're gonna die like at a certain point and that driveway felt like that I felt like i was gonna go insane like with also doing wrong turn and like just how hot it was but i was just like yeah. keep going yeah because like yeah it's just at the end of the day you know it's gonna work out yeah it's man. just like i don't know it's just, it it was tough but like you know i learned a lot it was awesome i'm yeah. gonna do it again next year so yeah you know Fingers crossed. All right. Well, uh, yeah. I appreciate appreciate it. I love going to, to driveway and just hanging out and being being part of the community. Oh yeah. I will join you on the Matador ride and, and get mm-hmm. uh get dropped. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to to thank you, uh, you know, sincerely, authentically, um, for for helping make bike racing just a, a really great again. Great, <laughs> make, make bike racing great again. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you so much. Um, Had to do it. But but yeah, uh, gr- greatly appreciate it. Thanks for spending time uh, here on the show, and um, we'll we'll do, you know, what we can to to promote driveway and, and do some fundraising for takes for, a village, for, man. Twenty twenty four. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thanks for coming on the show. Hell.